First of all, before I get started, I want to thank Andy Moon for sending over his personal Samsung Galaxy Z Flip for review. It's a niche enough device that Samsung PI just hadn't got stock in the UK to go around. Now, this has been on sale for a couple of months. There are plenty of initial reviews out there, but this has since had a mountain of updates to its firmware, OS, core applications and so on. The most recent being a few days ago to improve the flex mode, I, how selected Samsung written applications behave when the phone's partly open, for example, sat on a desk, perhaps handling a video call hands-free. So at least I'm getting to deliver a verdict on a phone that's had the software glitches ironed out already, and the Z Flip is surprisingly slick, usable and even robust. With a truckload of caveats though, and similar to the Galaxy Fold, when it eventually got re-engineered last autumn, they have similar hinges and are clearly from the same design stable, even though the fold is around a different axis. Here the idea is obviously that the standard if tall smartphone can fold on itself to be smaller in your pocket. Again, obviously, it then becomes twice as thick. So there's only a real gain if your clothing or carrying arrangements dictate a smaller plan form factor. I'd have guessed the Z Flip would be perfect for ladies, I'm thinking of makeup, compact form factor and handbag use, or maybe that's just me showing my age, but none of the females I showed it to jumped at it, so it causes me to question just who this phone's aimed at. Now men, real men, tend to carry their smartphones thinnish and tallish in trouser or jacket pockets, and a tech blob that's twice as thick, whatever the length, just doesn't really work or have any advantages. Me, well, I use slimline belt cases and this wouldn't work for me either. So here's the thing. Did anyone actually ask for a phone that was half the height for a form factor that folded in this way? I don't think so. And I'm sorry, Samsung, I'm sorry for being negative about what is otherwise a terrific smartphone and a grand piece of technology, but it's more a demonstration of what the company can do rather than a product that will take the market by storm, especially at a £1,300 price, which is just crazy. But on with the good. This is in many ways a Galaxy S10e-ish in terms of specs with a few upgrades here and there. A taller 6.7 inch display, just a mono speaker at the bottom and a thinner capacitive sensored power button on the side. The S10e can be bought for way less than £500 these days, mind you, which means that you're paying two and a half times as much just for a larger screen that can fold in half or as i say no real carrying benefit in the real world you get a second exterior display to show time date and battery charge which is both cool and a bit retro but you have to use two hands to open up and use the device now is it possible to open the z flip with one hand kind of eventually it takes a good 10 seconds then only if you brace it against your tummy it takes a lot of dexterity and there's a high chance of dropping the phone so it's a two-handed open unlike with a traditional smartphone where it's trivial to slide from a pocket or whatever unlock with face thumbprint whatever all with one hand so the other hand can then hold on to a tube rail a bag of shopping a briefcase a child's hand and so on the z flip really is a pain to own day to day Again, sorry, Samsung, it's a great, it's a great tech demo, but it's not a smartphone I can recommend from a form factor perspective. The materials used are very interesting, starting on the outside with the most oleophobic glass I've ever seen. You put the Z Flip down on a Qi charger, for example, it charges happily, even when closed, but keep a BDI on it. A minute later, it will have stopped charging, slid off the charger, and will be on its way to falling off your desk onto the floor. I had this happen several times and thankfully, and don't worry Andy, I managed to catch it. Now you can buy cases of sorts, they solve the problem, they provide drop protection, they clamp onto each half, but then the phone is even thicker when closed. Inside the display is essentially plastic and extremely vulnerable, as shown by Zack at Zeri Rig Everything. Even a fingernail can cause permanent damage, which isn't good for a £1,300 phone. The plastics on this top off quote, ultra thin glass and to be fair when Zach started abusing the phone with his bends and handfuls of grit the Z Flip survived against all expectations. In summary the Galaxy Z Flip is solid enough and will survive day to day 
provided it doesn't get dropped or fall from a level surface too often, but it's bound to pick up scratches and dents on its display, which may offend some users' cosmetic sensibilities. There's also the understandable permanent curved indent around the fold. You get used to the presence of this crease. It just comes part of the Z Flip's character. Now, when open, it's just a modern, normal, typical Samsung flagship in terms of interface, one UI on Android 10, default and slightly bloated application loadout, edge screen and lighting. There are no real surprises. If you've used any Samsung S-Series phone in the last few years, you know exactly what to expect. A little taming and pruning and you'll be fine. I still love this uh, S9 Plus here. It's pruned to within an inch of its life. USB type C down here at the bottom charges at 15 watts, i.e. three amps. That's slow by modern standards, but it's enough. Plus 15 watt also wired charging all into a combined battery capacity of 3,300 milliamp hours across two cells. Battery life is acceptable, though I can't say I pushed the phone too hard for the other reasons I've talked about. And there's no audio jack, which there is on the S10 range, but not the S20. But space really is at a premium here, so I can understand. The main camera is excellent, plus there's an ultra wide lens too, but you didn't come to the Z Flip for imaging. So we'll just gloss over this and leave some examples on the screen here. Other than to say, you can use the cameras in a couple of interesting ways. With the flip closed, the tiny exterior display becomes a token viewfinder so you can center selfies. Plus, when partly opened, you can prop the Z Flip open up as a webcam for imaging in either direction, with the heavier part of the body as a stand. Pretty neat in these COVID-19 stay-at-home streaming days. I loved testing the Z Flip, but I can't possibly recommend it to anyone unless you have a specific need and genuine need for a phone that can fold in this way to suit your specific apparel and accessories. That this isn't the mainstream won't really bother Samsung. They have the budget to experiment with technology demonstrators like this. Now, how about putting the plastic glass hybrid display and the, the brush protected hinge tech here into a more polished Galaxy Fold 2 where your standard size smartphone unfolds into a nine inch tablet. Now that's the flagship folding device most of us are waiting for. In the meantime, this is the Z Flip.